Okay. Um, there's a, if we take a look at malaria, um, a lot of people see it as a viral disease, so that it's caused by viruses. It's not caused by viruses. It's a process that causes malaria. Also, another common misunderstanding about malaria is the fact that they say the mosquito makes you sick. The mosquito does not make you sick. He also carries the disease. He's called what we call a vector, and he carries the disease from one person to another. He's also affected by the disease. Not as, as much as humans are, but it's also affected by the disease. So let's take, take a quick look. Um, some terminology you need to know. Vector is a secondary host. Our secondary host is going to be, in this case, the mosquito. We are the, if the mosquito is a secondary host, who is the primary host? We are. We are the primary host of the disease. Or carrier of parasites, which requires two hosts to complete its life cycle. That's why we target the mosquito. We're not mad at the mosquito. We're not mad at Anopheles, which is a mosquito that carries ma um, malaria. Uh, but um, in terms of survival, we try and eliminate the mosquito, or we try and eliminate the mosquito by so that we don't get bitten and it doesn't spread the disease to us. And one of the best ways to eliminate the mosquito the bite is to actually eliminate the mosquito. Then, parasite is an organism which invades a host cell or organism, us, and of course the Anopheles mosquito, causing harm to the host but benefiting from the relationship. Okay, so we get sick, we, we feel the harm, but the malaria, can, uh, the, the parasite can finish its life cycle because it's in us. An endoparasite will be a parasite found inside the host. This is typical of malaria. We find it inside of us. An ectoparasite is a parasite, for example, a flea or a tick that's on the outside, sits on the outside of the skin and just attaches itself. Okay, so Anopheles mosquito is the vector, so it's not all mosquitoes. And we have quite a few... Um, common misunderstandings with regards to the Anopheles mosquito. For example, you, you're, in, you're in a malaria area, you get a bite from a mosquito and it itches and you step and think, I better be careful of malaria now uh, because I might get malaria on the bitten. Guys, this, this mosquito is bite out of us. Our body has no immune response towards the, the bite of the Anopheles mosquito. So he's going to bite you, you won't even know it. There's no, not going to be a bump, it's not going to itch or nothing, so, because it's, its mouth parts are too small. It's unlike the mosquitoes we get here. A mosquito bites you around here, you will know it. It will itch, there will be a bump, but not with the Anopheles mosquito. Okay, so the Anopheles mosquito uh, has quite a distinctive shape, as you can see, that typical bum in the air, Quite typical of the, the shape of the Anopheles mosquito. It's a vector of the parasite Plasmodium, which is a protist, and Plasmodium causes malaria. Is the Plasmodium which causes it's Plasmodium that causes malaria? If a mosquito is not infected with Plasmodium bites you, you will not get malaria. So that Anopheles mosquito might bite you. You might even see it biting you. But that doesn't mean he's got malaria inside of him. It just means he might have malaria inside of him. The plasmodium needs the Anopheles mosquito as a vector, a vector, as we said, a secondary host that can carry the disease from one primary host to another primary host. What are the symptoms of malaria? Okay, it kills millions of people throughout the world. Symptoms of the disease include flu-like symptoms like chills, High fever, shivering, sweating, um, basically severe flu symptoms. Um, headaches and vomiting also, up to two weeks after being bitten by the mosquito. Okay, so, and that's a that is especially two weeks, that's when you need to watch out. 10 days to 14 days, that's when you will start feeling the symptoms. In severe cases, convulsions uh, can occur if the liver and spleen are infected. 
and this person can become jaundiced. Jaundice means that there's going to be a yellowing of the skin, um, especially when you're as white as me, you're going to see the yellow skin. If you have more melanin in your skin, which most of you have, um, then you can watch for the yellow in the eye. You can also watch for the yellow on the gums. That's where you're going to notice it. So the gums are going to turn yellow, and the eye, the white of the eye, will turn a yellowish color. And that's because of the liver not working properly. If the liver not, is not working properly, that's what we get. Um, because it's not breaking down your red blood cells, and then you get a bulge of what we call fully in your uh, in your system, and that causes the yellowing of all the white parts, all the the, the lighter shaded parts of our body. In severe cases, convulsions and jaundice may occur, and then a red blood cell ruptures, and the per person becomes anemic. That's why you are tired. Is because you are not carrying enough oxygen because what happens is your red blood cells are being affected. And so as the red blood cells break and they're being destroyed, you're not carrying enough oxygen to your body and so you will become very tired. Okay, treatment and management. Okay, so the infected red blood cells can cause blockages in the blood vessels and major organs and eventually death. Okay, so Unfortunately, blood clotting is a big problem because of the blood, the red blood cells breaking. Um, treatment for malaria includes uh, using of drugs like chloroquine to interrupt the parasite's life cycle. And a traditional malaria remedy um, often used is sweet wormwood, uh, which grows uh, mainly in uh, southeast of Asia as well as in our southern eastern in Africa. And then managing the disease includes vector control programs. Um, so we try and eliminate the mosquito. If we eliminate the mosquito, we can eliminate the mosquito bite. Other things we do, we use mosquito nets, mosquito repellent, um, on our skins or otherwise candles that we can burn, especially those that have citronella inside of them, to, to try and eliminate or uh, get distance between us and the mosquito, so that we don't get bitten. Okay, now fungal diseases, uh, just so that we have one disease of fungi that we do discuss. Um, um, the one that we're covering here is athlete's foot, so it's fungal disease, it's a fungi. So we went through persister now, now we're going to into a fungi disease, a fungal disease. Okay, so people, athlete's foot uh, occurs as a red rash between the toes. And they commonly call it athlete's foot because of where we picked up first what was athletes, because they used to use communal showers. So if we take, for example, someone that uh, goes to the gym, this is typically where you can pick it up very really easily because you will use a shower that's shared by other people. And so it's, it is the, on one person's foot, he goes to the shower, it's a nice environment for a fungi, it's nice and moist, and so forth, and he spreads the spores onto the shower while he's busy after his gym session, and he's busy showering, and now he's on the floor. Next person comes along, he sits on the same floor, where he does he go? Onto the spores are going oxygen, and now, now it's perfect, now you put it, you've just had a shower, now you put these spores, these fungi, into the environment that the fungi loves. What do you do? You put it inside a wet, sweaty, moist, soft person. Okay, so it's nice and moist. Fungi loves that. And then you put it into a very dark shoe. Perfect environment for a fungi. Okay, so this is the perfect environment for fungi, and now it's going to start to grow, and it's going to put it rhizomes that you have seen in the previous lesson. It's going to put it inside the skin, and what does it eat? What does it feed on? It feeds on skin cells. And so now it's starting to eat away at your skin cells, and you can see over there, nice 
uh, spores getting into your skin and starting to eat your skin. So fine filamentous fungi invade the skin if the environment is moist and warm, such as between the toes. Sometimes the skin may crack and bleed if untreated, and the rash may spread to the toes uh, or feet or palms of the hand. Why to the palms of the hand? I know what I do in the afternoon. I know this guy. But I know what I do in the afternoon. When I take off my shoes, and I take off my sock, and then the first thing I do is I do this. Ah, now where is the acid spit out? And now I'm a male, and as males you might have picked up from what we said previously, um, the male, we actually found the coronavirus is spread easily to the male. Why? Because we don't wash our hands. Females is uh, normally a lot more hygienic than males. Males get strong, diseases don't touch us, so we don't wash our hands as regularly as we should. Okay, so that's how it can get onto the hand. Then, people, how can I um, prevent this? I need to wear shoes that can breathe so that my feet don't get that moist, warm, sweaty environment. Okay. And, um, Cotton socks also help because it creates a breathable environment. Okay. Okay, so this is basically there's some videos. I'm going to try and show this video now, also just on the linear. But I'm also going to try to do caution so you can go and watch them. And there's links to those videos on on the presentation that I'm going to send to you. But one of the tasks that you guys have to do with What's with this is this one. We're going to take a look. Uh, oh no, this is just this is not a share table. I thought this was already the share table. This is not a share table. So this is what you need to do. Is you need, and this is going to be your homework after I played the videos. You need to go look at rabies, aphids, and malaria. We've covered now. You're going to look at rabies, and you're going to look at cholera. Okay. Now, in terms of rabies. I uh, actually, um, my foster daughter is sitting there in the back and she loves a lot. She plays around with them all the time. She even um, goes to the SPA, A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C, A, and she helps her there regularly. So those are the weekends. What does she do? She is chewing with one of the dogs. And she's pointing the one up with her on her eye here. And the first thing we're thinking about the red loss that she has. But that's why you would get a tetanus shot, is for rabies. Okay, so you look up these and you finish them up. Guys, most of the information on here is either going to be in your focus book or on these slides. Otherwise, guys, you're very sorry. We didn't have Google in our day. You have Google. Okay, thank you. You've got it. All that you have to do. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording.